welcome back to my channel. So today we have a review of the latest release from Bulgari. It is the new Omnia Crystalline Eau de Parfum. I have it here in a sample and I'm going to compare it to the original Crystalline. <music> If you are new here, then hello and welcome. I'm all about perfumes. I have hundreds of videos like this going through new releases, ranges, perfume notes. Um, so do check out my other content. I'll leave my video to my guide to the Bulgari Omnia range down below in the description box. And if you are a regular viewer, do make sure you're subscribed and give the video a thumbs up. That really helps me. And I'll leave the links as well to where you can get this and the original where they're available all around the world. So if you're a regular here, you'll know that I'm a big fan of the Omnia range. I love their really unique bottles. I see they have changed the bottles slightly, but they're so unique, kind of like a shell. And Omnia Crystalline is one that actually um, really inspired me when I was creating my Aphrodite perfume because it has a lotus note in it, which is so unusual. You don't come across that much. And it's like so fresh and aquatic and just reminds you of being somewhere tropical where you get lotus flowers growing and that humidity in the air, that aquaticness. Um, it's really wearable, Christine. It has a hint of like a tea leaf in, very classy, something that would be nice for work, for the office, um, but it is an eau de toilette, so I always wished it lasted longer. And they did have an eau de parfum version a long time ago, so I was excited to see that they've now made an eau de parfum version. So if I compare this with the original, I would say this definitely has that same DNA, which I'm so pleased about. So it's slightly fruitier in the opening. The opening of the eau de toilette is quite lemony, whereas this one actually has a pear note, um, which definitely adds to that aquatic wateriness. Pear is such a, a watery fruit, if you think about it. But the lotus is definitely still the main note, really classy. I get the tea leaf. I think they've added a hint of jasmine, which helps it project. So this is definitely coming across to me as a more intense, improved, better version of the original, which makes me so happy. I really, really do recommend this. If you're looking for something just really like classy and fresh, so at f and at first it is quite green, but it then settles to reveal that lotus note. I think if you work perhaps as like a nurse or a doctor or something, you want something quite classy and clean feeling, I think this would be perfect. It's definitely still light. I'd say this is more of a daytime, spring, summer or hot weather fragrance or, you know, maybe just around the house. It's quite cozy, classy. There's also some sandalwood in the base, which I am getting now, which is adding a creaminess to the dry down, but definitely unique. I am so pleased they've done an Eau de Parfum version of this. It is quite pricey. The 50 mil is 99 pounds and the 100 mil is 140, and though you can get it at Look Fantastic with my code LFTF Soaky to get 21% off. Um, but I do think it's just a beautiful, classy fragrance. And definitely now I would recommend that over the original just because it's gonna have better longevity than the Eau de Toilette, um, but it still has the same like DNA. So definitely Soaky approved. And I do love the new bottle as well. I've seen them in store and they're really, pretty and again unique. Um, let me know if you've tried this one. How do you think it compares to the Eau de Toilette? Let me know what your favourite Omnia was. I loved Omnia Pariva that was passion fruit that was discontinued, so sad. I definitely want to make a passion fruit perfume one day. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts guys. I'm super happy with that new release. But that's it. So thanks so much for watching as always and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!